Hi, my name is Karen Holmes. I'm the founder and director of the World Peace Organization for the One World Government. Today, I'm going to do a short about revolution. On September 18th, Donald Trump, uh, the chatter is going around that, that there's going to be another insurgency, uh, another day just like January 6th. And this is going to br bring together a bunch of of all of Donald Trump's 74 million supporters and they're going to have a revolution. They're going to go to the Capitol again. And this time they're going to possibly finish what they just, what they started. So today I wanted to talk about the, let's say the three levels of revolution. Let's say, let's say that there is no revolution going on in the middle idea, the existing structure. There's always evolution based on the idea of everybody moving forward and evolving. So we're talking about three different ideas related to evolution, but we all know that we're evolving along and that is not a big deal because everybody's doing it. Um, each generation comes in and e is evolving um, either up, down, or straight ahead. And, and the kids these days are basically living in a world that is seems to be falling apart but basically there's there's still hope for the future we're dealing with all these existential threats but all that's doing is bringing people together to solve problems okay so i'm going to talk about two different ideas about revolution and we know that the we watched the insurgency on january 6th we're talking about september 18th and the next trip but what and we have an idea that that things could get very very bad around the country that that if if 74 million people in the United States are still supporting Donald Trump and believe in his in his uh, his perspective his interpretation of what's going on in the world basically uh, from their perspective they believe that they're doing the right thing and from everybody else's perspective, they can't understand how they ever got to that idea. I'll go into the idea of how we got into that mess in, 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 in this idea, but I'm going to, the application, of, not in this idea, but in the application of that is our first government proposal. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about, go that in much greater depth in a, in the, in a future video. Right now we're talking about revolution and we're, we're going to focus on that idea and I'm going to explain to you how there is a revolution going on and it doesn't have anything to do with, with Donald Trump. Okay, when, and this, I'm going to just address the overview idea. When the Iraq war started, George George W. Bush uh, perpetrated a preemptive strike on Iraq and it, it separated the people. We all are experiencing this schism, the, the idea. This is called Armageddon. This time period is called Armageddon and it separated the people into four groups. Uh, let's say that the, there were uh, a bunch of peace protesters who are protesting the preemptive strike, the invasion of Iraq. They were standing on certain principles that the Iraqi people were a sovereign nation, that there were no weapons of mass destruction. Not long before that occurred, the Senate had announced that the, the sanctions had, had prevented Saddam Hussein from um, they were working that they had prevented Saddam Hussein from having weapons of mass destruction. Um, Hans Blix had been, when when George Bush announced his intent to do that, the UN weapons instructor ins, inspector, uh, Hans Blix had gone in and he was inspecting. They hadn't found any weapons of mass destruction. So what happened was people started to think of it as an illegal war that it was, we didn't have the right to go in and do that in Iraq. Now, those of you who are very young, you know, you're probably 
um, aware that it already was an illegal war, but you've been exposed to a lot of rhetoric from the adults who basically are were willing to fight. The, the illusion that Donald Trump is weaving is another was actually started out with George W. Bush. We just pulled out of Afghanistan. Uh, that was supposed to be a a retaliation for for 9/11, uh, when the World Trade Center and and um, the Pentagon and it was there was supposed to be a flight that was supposed to attack the Capitol. Uh, that was those that was blocked. The Pentagon was hit by a plane and and also the World Trade Center went down. So now we're looking at this idea of revolution. When the that happened, when it separated the the people into four groups, let's say that there was an evolution to the revolution. Okay? That's a word that we're going to explain in our in my books and and the government proposals and that thing. So, but I'm going to talk about the revolution, the idea of the revolution. Are we? I am calling for an evolution to the revolution. I'm talking about evolution to the revolution, and what that is, that idea, I believe, has been been woven into an illusion to call for revolution. Okay. The evolution to the revolution is talking about the schism that happened. And the evolution to the revolution is like a change that has occurred. People are standing on the principles. So let's say that you have, let's say you have an example of this is like a caucus. Um, evolution to the revolution is like a caucus in, in how certain states um, hold their, their, uh, their elections, nominations, their primaries. They say they have four different people and then one gets kicked out and the other ones, they go over. Same kind of idea. You have, you have the people who stand on the principles, the people who, who, when they stand on the principles, this is called, these are the, this is how Armageddon works. We're in the end times. They're talking about the end of democracy. They're talking about this, but it's the end of a cycle. So are we going to, if this is the end of the cycle of our democracy, is it the end of the cycle and the beginning of a new cycle? Or is it the end of democracy itself? If it's the end of democracy, we're watching, we're watching this. We're watching Donald Trump turn over elections, we're watching him take back, uh, un unraveling the Constitution, rewriting the Constitution. Is the Constitution going to stand and then be taken on to the creation of a new level, a new cycle, or is it going to be, is it going to be collapse? So we're, we're facing these three ideas. Is it going to go up and to become the cre the Constitution going to become the basis for an international government, a new cycle for that's going to last and carry on? Is it going to stand and then be the basis for this? Because revolutions are happening all over the world. Okay, if we can avoid a revolution and go on and to create it, we are demonstrating to the rest of the world that our Constitution will stand. Okay, it's like the flag still standing after after for uh, after the when the um, Star Spangled Banner, the basis of the Star Spangled Banner. Okay. Now, if it goes down into Donald Trump's version of revolution, we're looking at the end of democracy. If it goes straight ahead with Joe Biden, if he can't solve the problems, then he's also going to cause. It's going to, people are going to be rebelling and walking away from him, and they're going to have to figure out what to do about that. But if we are taking our Constitution to evolution of the revolution, what will happen is, just like the first part of our American Revolution, we're going to be building to create our Constitution, but we're taking the idea to the next level. The, at the beginning of the cycle was when our founding fathers did that. 
Um, they debated the idea. They talked about it. They had an evolution to the revolution. They had their revolution had an evolution to it. The first people that stood on it were like the Sons of Liberty. They were the people like John Adams, uh, Sam Adams, Patrick Henry, uh, the people who who were the people recognized that there was a dark cloud on the horizon, that England was not going to talk. They were they were going to just keep being using maximum pressure, you could say, on the colonies. Okay? So then the people who stood on the principles were the first people to come in. The second people to come into the American Revolution were the people who 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 were the people who focused on money and power. That's when Alexander Hamilton came in and his group of people. They were focused, the first group, principles. The second group, power. But they equated money and power and they didn't come in until they lost their money. The third group of people were the people whose lives were affected. That is, this is evolution to the revolution. The fourth group of people to come in were the people who functioned for their own interest. Those were like the wives of the 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 British uh, people, the British um, troops that had come in, and they they got shipped off to England when they, they the war started. They they worked sometimes as as spies and fed for their own country. They had to decide between their husband and their and his his family. They were loyalists. They were people. People who were or the the there were people who were loyalists and there were people who were revolutionaries. Okay, at first the revolution wasn't a popular thing. Twenty five percent of the population stood on the principles. Twenty five percent of the people were focused on money and power, and they didn't come in until they lost their money and their power. The third group of people were the people. The, whose lives were affected. They were like the farmers who had to had to billet the troops, or they had to they had to give up and leave their their farms to their wives and their children, young children, to run when they went off to war. There were the pe then the last people functioned for their own interests. That was the revolution, the evolution to the revolution. The revolution is not just standing up and saying, we're going to take over the country because we don't like how the country is being run. That is not a revolution. Our American revolution is going to teach us about revolution, okay? We stood up to defend it, but the people who stood on the principles, are these the people who functioned for their own interests is this the dark money people who are basically sacrificing the lives of the people by telling them lives and we view illusion? Or are they the people who are standing on the principles like John Adams? What does John Adams and Donald Trump have in, in common? John Adams told the truth. He was disliked by everybody. Donald Trump is disliked by a lot of people. But John Adams did it because he stood on the principles. He was a man of principles. Donald Trump is a man who functions for his own interests, and we're going to go into that in greater depth in the books. So we're looking at revolution. Are you going to join the revolution, or are you going to join the evolution to the revolution where you stand on the principles? Are you going to come in now? Is this to overturn the U.S. government? To make Donald Trump president for life, he wants five terms in office. Okay, are we going to dismantle the Constitution or are we going to debate this idea of the international government and understand that 25% of the population, because the schism happened all over the world as a result of the Iraq War, 25% of the population are standing on the principles 25% of the global population are, are focused on money and power. 25% are focused on their lives. 25% are focused on their own interests. That's dark money. That's special interest groups that are, that are functioning behind the scenes, weaving an illusion. Those are the people who basically want to control the world by taking away other people's rights. So we have to look at 
revolution based on evolution to the revolution, like our founding fathers did, the end of the cycle, the beginning of the cycle, 245, 250-year cycle, okay? And then the beginning of the new cycle, where we're taking the Constitution to the next level. It will the Constitution stand? Or is it going to be overturned? If Donald Trump manages to take control of all the state legislatures, will it be a point where the state legislatures with all of those red red um, states as opposed to the blue states will they stand will the state legislatures stand so the power is shifting from the federal government donald trump has taken a lot of control of that red map based on the state legislatures and the article 5 amendment convention what is an there was, has always been a fear of an Article 5 Amendment Convention being a runaway convention. Is that, Are we facing our fears now? Are we going to stand up and do this to protect our country, to defend the Constitution, or are we are going to amend it legally to open this debate? Seven years where our organization is calling for an Article 5 Amendment Convention. Is it going to be that's the next person to come in. My organization, as it stands right now, cannot lobby. We cannot start a grassroots movement. We cannot do this. I have to take it and separate it out to the next person who has the power to do that. And basically, there's a lot of resistance to this idea right now from the people who function for their own interests. So there's, I'm dealing with revolution in the organization, but there's also an evolution to the revolution. The people who stand on the principles. Are we standing up to defend the Constitution or are we starting to undermine it? Okay, that's where it stands. Will the Constitution stand? All right. So thank you so much. I ask you to like, share, and subscribe. Especially now between today is the, uh, is it the 6th, the uh, Monday, the Labor Day? between now and and the, um, the 18th when Donald Trump is supposed to bring together all those people to head for to head to Washington DC are they going to undermine the Constitution or are they going to take the Constitution like the American Revolution and carry it forward a lot of people have thought about Hamilton and what he what role he played if Hamilton played, if the Republicans support Cong support Donald Trump, the Republicans, and Republican in name only, the people who are focused on money and power, are they are they going to be the people who, like Hamilton, and and Thomas Jefferson, basically, John Adams and Jefferson, they just they just got into fights all the time because of everything. So. Um, because some were standing in power and some were standing on principles. So um, read about the American Revolution and know about it and understand because we are the founding parents of the international government. All of us right now, we are living history right again. Um, we, we are understanding our American Revolution because we're living it. We are starting a new cycle. I'm going to just share with you one more thing. This cycle is happening all over. The same thing happened with the Catholic Church and the revolution based on uh, the, the St. Malachy's uh, prophecies for the end of the end this cycle. St. Francis, or Pope Francis, is actually the first pope of the new cycle. So who's going to be the president, the first president of the international government? We're going to be working on that for the next seven, eight years, depending on when somebody comes in and as, as part of my organization, my framework, and we're going to open the debate on that. So I'd like you to like, share, and subscribe, but most of all, comment and share with other people and join the debate because we're debating the beginning we're the new founding parents we are the federalist papers we are the people who are 
all of us right now in America because we understand how our American revolution works better than anybody else. We are liking and sharing and subscribing because we are part of history. And the same thing is going to happen when we go back to go back to Oxford and Stonehenge and we're going to be part of the history of Stonehenge. We're, we are living history right now. Okay, so like, share, and subscribe. So thank you.